Hi. This here is the Sun 2000 GTIL grid tie inverter with limiter. And it's not just a simple grid tie inverter with limiter. Limiter means a no export, zero export feature. This inverter has a speciality and that's why it is used many times by DIY battery builders. It is one of the very few inverters which officially are designed to discharge as well from a battery. And there is uh, one thing with these inverters which is important to notice. So this is not a review or anything like this. I just want to tell you in a very short video how you have to switch this inverter on and off when you decide to discharge your battery into your house grid if you use some sort of timer based uh, feature so what exactly is this about when you want to discharge your battery in a certain time frame you have to disconnect your inverter from your loads somehow and with this inverter you actually have two options you could disconnect the AC it, it cannot discharge into the grid anymore or you can disconnect the DC but what is the better option for that uh, you have to know how this inverter is operating the internals of this inverter is powered from the AC side so the AC, it has an AC to DC conversion and it is producing its internal DC to run its control board, to run its screen, all the relays, etc. So if you decide to switch this inverter by the AC, effectively remove system power from the inverter. So this is equal to having an electronic device and switching it on and off by pulling the plug. On the other side, if you switch DC, this is the native way of switching, generating power with this inverter and then pushing it onto your grid. Because the core of this inverter is still a solar inverter, so it does not really matter if you connect a battery on its DC terminal or if this is solar panels. So when you decide to switch this inverter by time you should do it the way it is designed and this is designed as a solar inverter you have to switch the DC side and how to do that I will show you in a moment and I will show you also on the screen how this looks like so here is how the connections of the inverter look like you have the DC input terminals plus and minus you have uh, the connector to the limiter this limiter is going to my main distribution board where I am sensing the current and we have the display and on the bottom there is the AC output and the AC is connected as well in my main distribution board so the simplest way people switching this inverter is by just connecting this to a timer relay and then switching the AC on and off but this is just kind of brutally killing the inverter and I have already many times read somewhere in the forum that after some time the inverter is not functioning anymore and it does not boot anymore and so on so the unit's failing but this is in my opinion just because electronic devices are usually not uh, switched on and off like that so if you have a PC at home you will probably use the shutdown feature to safely shut down your, your PC and probably not pull the plug but in this case for the inverter this is also the anti eye landing feature so when the grid goes down the unit will be powerless and it will shut down and the rebooting time is then the protection time for the grid it is not a totally unintended procedure to remove AC but that is 
only when the grid goes down as an anti-eye landing feature and the grid is usually not going down on daily basis maybe even twice or three times a day that will only happen as you know from your place maybe once a month or once a year however uh, your grid is stable in your place but the sun will go down every day and it will power down the DC side and that's why we have to switch the DC side and I will show you now how this works here and how this looks on the screen switch the DC side you need two things on this inverter or general on every inverter one is a contactor so this one is responsible to switch the main DC power full current the full voltage so this contactor can switch my 60 volts and up to your maximum current in this case the inverter can pull 30 amps and the second item you need is a resistor to pre-charge the capacitor so there's capacitors in this inverter on the DC side if you shut down the DC they will be depleted and when you power the unit on again it would cause a huge inrush of current which can also damage the unit so you have to take care of the inrush so let me show you how this works exactly on the screen this is how the display looks like so you see we are of course on AC so the inverter is powered on but we don't have DC so we have zero watts generated here and then to the left you see the small number 0.0, .0 volts that is the DC input voltage and because th that one is zero it says starting voltage too low as a message in red on the down to the right that is the grid voltage and how much energy at the moment is there flowing through the sensor we are going to activate this now and you will hear a click then this small uh, number of the input voltage should rise and thereafter after two and a half seconds you will hear another click a more louder click clonk and this will then be the uh, contactor So now you see the inverter has connected to DC and is inverting, pushing back to the grid and it is equalizing uh, to 5 watts. And that is how it looks like when you then connect DC. And this would be a simplified schematics. You have your battery, you have your inverter, the connections in between and on our plus we do have our main contactor so that contactor have its switching coil and then we have our bypass circuit that is another relay in which we have our bypass resistor so in my case I have a 48 volt battery system and I'm using a 50 ohms resistor the current which is resulting is a 1 amp and if you have a 1 amp going over 50 ohms resistor this will result in, a one, in 50 watts so that's why my resistor is a 50 ohms 50 watts resistor and that resistor as you see is just jumping over the contact of the contactor then you need some relay circuit with two relays one is the bypass circuit the other one is the coil of your contactor and this there could be of course different methods how you do this in my opinion the easiest is to use a simple 
microcontroller with a real-time clock so you that, that you can set times and a relay board with two relays and with a simple code you can just program your relays that the relay number one is activating and then two to three seconds later the coil of the contactor is activating. I'm also doing like, like this, after I activate the contactor, I deactivate the bypass circuit. So if there is a failure of the contactor, that the current is not continuing to go over the bypass resistor and feeding into the inverter. This is uh, what I wanted to show you. This is how the inverter is supposed to be switched. In the meantime, the power wall is charging again. In the case you are running this uh, inverter and you need to use this kind of feature, uh, please try to do it that way and it might save the life of your inverter. Okay, so thank you for watching. I hope you found it interesting. Please comment, subscribe, like and I see you next time.